all the way off. I damn right? near want to play it back just right quick, just to see. <laughs> Make sure, man. I got, you got to prove it to me. Yeah. It's a foreseeable risk, a manageable risk. Right. See a chance, got to take it. So, yeah. Um, we about to go off. That's why we here, bro. Uh, so, Greg, when I called you to uh, get this show popping, you know, I got the call from my brother. He's like, yeah. Um, yeah, he called me too. We do this podcast. I want y'all to come in and talk about, you know, thoughts of the day, whatever. Not keep it serious, but talk about, you know, some issues. And I told him I had been ready to, to go off for, for, the longest. for quite some time. Yeah. You know me. We go back, what, 20 years. <sighs> Um, Damn. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not known to be shy, <laughs> with my opinion. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I just ran off some topics yeah. and uh, put some structure to it, and we're gonna see how is, uh, how that's gonna play. Yeah. So, the timing for the show is perfect. I think we at a point right now. Um, when I look around just see black people, people of color, not white men in particular. Basically. Stepping up, stepping out. We just don't have to listen anymore to what they're saying. Right. Organizing around just truth and common sense. Um, particularly around just acknowledging what this nation is, how it was created, this heritage. This shit is built about. on. Yeah. <laughs> the shit and the, built and on. where we're actually at in this noble experiment. Right. You know, that they call democracy or America or whatever. In an so, attempt to achieve a more perfect union. Huh? So I think that's going to be, you know, the general context of certainly this, this show, you know. But, but maybe this series, man. Because I'm, I'm just tired. I'm tired. You've been tired, man. Um, and, and growing mature, and I'm thinking, okay, I didn't really get deep, deep into really learning about or uh, uh, being woke or whatever, but a lot of what I know about black history, understanding the black people definitely coming from the N.O., but how we're getting that book land in there. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have understanding, empathy mm -hmm. for people not knowing, appreciating, caring about, you know, the history. The authentic history. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And how it continues to impact people's lives today. Today, right. You know, good, bad, better, worse, you right. know. Shit, if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you come from. We are. You don't know where the fuck you're going. So. We are a country that exists now based on, you know, where we came from. Right. And if people don't just acknowledge, I don't want nothing. I don't think people by and large want nothing. We just acknowledge. Yeah. And once we have that understanding, it's just okay. But if but if you acknowledge certain shit, then the fallacy of what this country purports to be, all that shit gets wiped away. Right? Yeah. So I mean, like there's certain things that you just I mean it's unrealistic to even expect America to come to terms with, man. Like it's shit's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So I was thinking about that 1619 project. And I think what makes that so scary to a certain type of person is- An older white male. Just information. It contradicts everything that they've learned coming up. And it contradicts all of the bullshit that they, they intentionally teach, right? So then all of this hierarchy and all of the bullshit that America is is built on these fucking lies, right? Mm -hmm. So if if we have a project that is rooted in the lives of people, not just some stats, not just some stories that some people told, mm -hmm. like this shit is this is rooted in people's real lives, man. Like that erases all of these fallacies, man. And like had a conversation with a friend of mine about the concept of racism, right? And can racism actually be removed from this country? And I'm like, man, do you understand that this whole Experiment will fall flat on this fucking face if there is no racism. This country is built on that shit. This country is built. You 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 gotta have a certain uh, uh, underclass for the the dominant class to step on in order for America to exist. I I understand that perspective, but I don't necessarily agree with it. 
So I think, to be honest, they fucked up. The founding fathers, um, as you want to call them, uh, the, the people, the framers of the Constitution, I really think they fucked up by ne never considering the day that a black person could be a human being. Uh, a woman could be their equal. Did they fuck up or were they just not possible? Or it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a possibility for, a probability or a possibility for them? You know, I, I mean, they, they definitely included in the document women can't vote, right? right? They definitely included in the document people that look like me and you are three-fifths of a person, right. right? So they wrote that in the document. To ensure that they kept their voting power. You know, but so. all of the other words, if you just read it on its face, they fucked up. So it does treat white men of a certain means or economic background. Right. Certainly right. back then at the time, right. Probably it treats owners. them equally and fairly. Of course. But, but they never envisioned any of those other classes being a part of their privileges, as they call it, being part of, of that. Right. So that is you know, I, I don't believe that you have to I don't I don't believe you just throw out the constitution or you know get rid of the, the laws as they exist. I you know I don't I don't know if it's a bit you know sadistic. I just want to see them applied equally. And then we'll see what laws come on and off the books and what laws are are are, are enforced and how they're prosecuted and things. I just think. So I think that's where it is. Yeah. It's the, the, the enforcing of the laws equally is cool, but see the, the punishment, the discipline, mm -hmm. that's my issue because, you know, we disproportionately face the toughest, the worst, the longest, the most harsh, the most disruptive, the most family and community disorienting and destroying sentences and penalties of anybody, mm -hmm. right? People of a certain other class commit the same offenses, man, and they get slaps on the wrist, right? That shit is, that is intrinsically built into the DNA of this country, right? Yes. So, you know, I think that that is the argument. And when you talk about it being scary to, you know, older white males, then they have to come to terms with the fact that they have done that shit. They have benefited from that shit. Like some of these old motherfuckers <laughs> in Congress, you you can't tell me that in their lifetime they have not looked upon people like me and you with the disdain of these niggas. Right? You can't I don't give a shit where you come from. I don't care how many times you'd have been saved. <coughs> no, I nah, nah. That these these people have in mm. their lifetime, right? Yes. That has been their their personal experience. So to expect those people to come to a term where they, they're comfortable seeing you and I as their equal, man, that's, that's, that's fucking retarded. And, and you know what? You've added another layer to it. I don't need them to view me as no equal. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But for laws to be for discipline, I, and honestly, bro, I don't really give a shit about the laws. I'm talking about how the discipline gets meted out. Yeah. Where the ass kickings come from. Who gets kicked in the ass? And I'm, my problem is, Y'all been kicking our people in the ass forever. If you gonna kick us in the ass, ass right, kicking need I, to be shed. I'm just saying, get the same Timberlands same thing. with the same steel toe boots and aim for their asshole just like you aim for my people. And, I, and then I we'll be cool with it. And I just don't think that America is in a place where it'll be cool recalling this foot and intentionally to let that follow through square off in the ass of a white person versus one of ours. And <clears throat> so how we go about fixing it? And Anybody who knows me, um, I'm I'm go vote. That's right. My thing. I also think, by the way, they fucked up with that. And a lot of people say the um, Reconstruction Amendments, Civil War Amendment, whatever you call it, Equal Rights, 13, 14, 15 Amendments, are the second founding of the country when they made those laws apply to everyone. Um, I think they kind of fucked up again. Um, these are, that's huge strides. Agree. And if you got gerrymandering, they closing districts now, they clearly don't want people to vote. Right. Um, clearly, 
are intentional and they're just blatant yeah. with our goal is to not have a certain color type of person vote and that's how we will win elections and, and take control. A lot of people say the South is not red, the South is suppressed. And so we have to go vote. Uh, and who do we vote for? Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that yeah. a, a little later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with respect to just acknowledging this country's history, you know, we eat we I mean, I, don't, I feel like it's my country, right? Right. We here. Um, ethnic cleansed Native Americans. Right. You know, we black. We know that story. Yeah. Um, I've treated women in this country. All types of all types of not white males. Right. Um. Yeah. So. We just not listening to them no more. And as long as they just continue to ignore or just don't acknowledge, we will continue to advocate completely um, in support of candidates who are not you. Um, from the next election to the very end of this show. But their response to that is the very gerrymandering and, you know, constrictive laws mm-hmm. that you just mentioned. Like, that—that that is their response to it. So, yeah. so our people turn around and say, okay, well, you know, what is the value of voting because we tangibly struggle to see the, the results, right? Yeah. But then at the same time, you got to say, well, if your vote didn't mean something, why the fuck they working so hard to make sure you don't get well, a chance have to, to vote. exercise? That's on us. Like, like that's the part that's on us. And I'm, and I'm saying the the reason to vote. So the reason to vote is representation right of course if they have certain people in the room or groups of people in the room some laws just wouldn't exist and some laws would be easily repealed right right um that's why you vote for whom do you vote um i am proposing not a white man that's the candidate. For, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally the majority of all political seats, judgeships, prosecutors, mayors, right. governors, president, the majority. Um, I think it's time for a change. Yeah. I want our representative government to look like the people it purports to represent. Right. And, you know, if the net result I hope is for you know the only people left voting for white men or other white men then they get the few seats that they should be allotted right. in representative politics right and the rest of us can be represented as well right and I think the only people that's gonna have a problem with that probably be that small that's all <laughs> white men probably <laughs> white men yeah and I, I can't <laughs> wait I cannot wait to come. Anybody's welcome to come on and and, and tell me why this would, is racist and a bad idea. I, I would like to learn more about why you would say that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that there's some folks that probably would would disagree with we, the, yeah, the I, philosophy of. I mean, yeah. So again, we'll talk about that a bit later on in the show. <laughs> Uh, but we'll get to current events. Current events. Uh, yeah, because I I just yeah, saw so some, some shit. Go on. What's popping? Yeah, son. So so it appears that uh, the city of New Orleans is considering uh, some adjustments to legislation around smoking marijuana. Right. So we've already we've already had the decriminalization, mm-hmm. you know, in small quantities, mm-hmm. <laughs> personal quantities, you know, and now they're they're Really considering some significant adjustments to laws, right? Okay. So, you know, I I don't I personally think that it, you know, it it, it it should be a no-brainer at this point, right? I mean, why are we even still holding the the contempt that we have for marijuana socially? I mean, like it's, it's I don't I don't get it. I don't I mean, understand. White men. So, 
And I'm not I'm not just saying that to be facetious. But I mean, I know, I know they can't they can't make <coughs> they can't make the profit from it. Well, not now they are. While well, a lot of our people are sitting in jail for it, that's another. So topic. our main topic today, we gonna we gonna. Get, it, but it's is what. So they had a bill in the legislature. Uh, it was actually a Republican House member from I want to say St. Tammany Parish. Shut this shit down. Who pro, no? Who proposed? Decriminalizing or legalizing recreational marijuana? Oh, that's the that's in a session now. Oh no, it was in a session. Oh, okay, I'm it was was different conversation. Roundly defeated. There was a lot of buzz, but roundly defeated. I think in the House and never made it to the Senate. And John Bell said, you know, he's non-committal on legislation until it gets to his desk. But he said, yeah, he's probably not gonna sign recreational, right? So they made it known from the get-go. The sheriffs and the district attorneys were against this. That's the only people. The uh, polling in the state said, you know, it's legal. Most Louisianians are in favor, uh, or at least don't care, right. about recreational weed. Right. The only people who have been hollering in the state are the sheriffs and the district attorneys. So, you know... That's their money maker, Dave. They offer them 20% of all the sales tax revenue, the shares and the deeds. They say, okay. They acknowledged it's going to be a money situation. We can't slam niggas for weed. We're going to lose money. The projected revenue was, I think, $100 million a year. So that would have been 20 mil to the sheriffs and the prosecutors. They said they don't want that. We would rather have that tool to slam, slam niggas yeah. so that, rather than take the money. So that means to, that the slamming is more important than the money, son. The, abil- we the, we, the ability to slam we don't want at no will. cameras. We don't want no training. We want slam. We don't need none of that. We want slam. That's all we you need. You tell we want, I smell weed, get, get out of the car. Yeah, and then your whole life is in That's what is important to their ass. You know, I mean, I'm not surprised, right? But, like then, but, then, but then New Orleans, New Orleans as a city inside yeah. of that state has a completely different philosophy around the same issue. Great. Right. right? No. The whole state feels the same way we do, except the sheriffs and the DA. But who is representative of the state? The, the law. The law. And the law say no. They just won't slap. Right. Like Mike, yeah. Oh man. No, I mean, you know, we we we've all had our experiences, you know what I mean? But so on the flip side of this law enforcement thing, and it's crazy because this show you again, white men, right? Stand your ground. Everybody know what that is, right? Yeah. Everybody know what that is. Black people know that shit ain't for us. I'm about to say that shit don't work for black people though. That shit that's that just understood. Let's get that shit straight. Like everybody who you ain't got no ground. They ain't, they ain't you, part of the... Yeah, you don't have no ground, so you can't... They ain't part nothing. of the question. Yeah, you ain't no ground. So, not only do they say, okay, if you could... If it's a drug crime situation, you cannot claim stand your ground. Like, legally, right. you can't claim that. Because you're committing right? a crime. Um, so that's just off top right there. Then... What, ha- what Jason Williams has done working, you know, he went to Tulane Law, I went to Tulane Law, so I, I follow. You know, he's talking about oh, liberal DA and all that, right? So recently, which is a kind of a big thing, mm-hmm. he filed a joint motion with the, with the woman who was slammed, her lawyer, they filed a joint motion to, I think, vacate our charges. All right. Right. She shot a dude that was sexually assaulting her. Okay. She got slammed and did 22, you know, October's and then go. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, you listen, and it was like, okay, 
why you know she couldn't use stand your grunt. Like, nobody even thought to even talk about bring that up. She in her own house. And then they got, you know, they got a whole, you know, clinic. Like how many other people in the same predicament? Yeah. yeah. Because you're not a white man, you can't use stand your ground. Because white men be out, they be they be raping people. Right. You can't just shoot white yeah, men. Yeah, the tool in their back pocket yeah. thing. You can't just be shooting white men who raping people. That's yeah, you can't be shooting white men at all. You have to try to escape or yeah. fight back. It's got to be clear. Yeah, you can't shoot white men at all. Like, yeah, you can't do that. At all. It's not acceptable. But let one of them be scared. Hey, you know. But you then, be. all right, so that goes back to the topic that we talked about in, in the first segment, bro. Like, you know, that small segment of people, right? They are doing everything that they can yeah. to ensure that they remain in the seat of power because that's the way this shit was designed for yeah. them, right? So you're right. They did fuck up when they never expected us to get to a point where we could be at a point where it doesn't matter to us how they see us, mm -hmm. right? Like, they never expected that, but guess what? They're going to do everything they can to keep us in what they consider to be our place. But I feel like it's, it's, it's blatant, and that's... It's been blatant, they No, no, no. I'm talking about... It's, it's too clear a solution to me. And I'm that's why I, I talk about this on, you know, voting is where it starts. It's too, everybody understands majority, even like kids, like vote, oh, let's play this video game. Right. Video. Like, and we know the game is rigged. We know about gerrymandering. Like the whole, the whole government is a gerrymander. Like the U.S. Senate. Exists. Like we didn't even say the word electoral college. Yet. Yeah, like all even, of that. We didn't even brought that up yet. Exist, so this minority control will be so so difficult to to break. It's sewn into the exactly. fabric of this motherfucker. But again, is a reason they don't want you to vote. Is a right. reason that they don't want immigration from countries with brown people. Yeah. Because that only hastens the browning and the less whitening of this country, right? Which which the less whitening translates to them losing their power. And it's and it's and and the more people who come who believe in that promise of the American dream, right? And I think when you come as an, an immigrant family, you definitely know about racism, discrimination, yeah, of course. from wherever you come I mean, that's all of it. Of course. But I don't think you have a unique, uh, that that specific burden, like if you're a black American, right? So it's different. You see, you feel that American dream. Right. <coughs> it's definitely a fucking dream. <clears throat> and the more people that move into the country who look like us or don't look like them, who believe in that American dream and who don't stand for less than equality, mm -hmm. who carve out their own little piece of the country right, and make it theirs, build their own communities, like we've done in other immigrant, you know, it's changing. The country is very but different I, but than I, what I, it was. I still have to draw straws with the fact that in most communities, you will go and you can find a little Italy. You know, like in most communities, you can go and find your Chinatowns, mm -hmm. right? Like it's very rare, rarely that you go to a community and you find, you know, a little Africa, you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it, is, it is still incumbent upon us to do more to bring our, like our true existence in this country, like this country wouldn't fucking exist yeah, if it wasn't for black people. Yeah, and that's people. what I'm. I don't. Like, I let's don't let's 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 be let's be real about this. So I'm I'm different in that. So like I said, I own it. Like I call it my it's my country. I don't subscribe to nobody stealing the country or nothing. We losing it. You ain't never had. So yeah, it's is is mine. One, I don't want to go off, but there's no little Africa because Africa is a continent. What I'm saying well, is, I mean, that's, what, but the more that's actually what it's, that's what it's called on the West Bank. More importantly, and I'll start with one, and we can talk about the name later. More importantly, what you said was we can call it Tim Buck tomorrow if that's what you want. We I don't all care. The country, every city in this, every city in this country, every corner of this country, 
is black. I mean, you got black people. Everybody got. I put this black. shit together. Yeah, <laughs> we this built this. I put this shit together. Black people everywhere. Understood. And once I got to Howard and met people from North Dakota and so, like you from North Dakota. Yeah. And you straight up black. Yeah. yeah that's understood. They got black people everywhere. Like, we everywhere. Ain't a corner of this planet this. you could go to where we ain't, we built we ain't been there. Certainly not this country. I had a uh, a relative, I think, that, that was in the military going back to, like, World War One. Like, that's crazy. Um, I told him, so, like, this is my country. I don't care what you're talking about. This is America. I'm, I'm married. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> this is America. I'm, I'm an American. Hey, baby. My grandfather was born in 1919, you know, so I'm like, you know. My grandpa used to go up and call me, you know, African-American. I'm black. I'm, been, I'm from here. This is where we from. <laughs> Always been here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just feel like keep going up. We're going to stick to a little, uh, we're going to get through this, and then we're going to say just bonus go all time, I guess. Shit. So, yeah, the the first thing. Um, that came to mind, you know, with uh, you know George Floyd, all of these killings of, of black people, black women, black men by police. That's a. I don't even want to get into that. I do. I mean, well, let's go off and then we'll lead to yeah, mass incarceration, which is what I won't go off about. Um, so, but yeah, let's start with, out. I mean, yeah, go ahead. I'm so. I'm increasingly frustrated with this shit because, you know, if if we go outside, and and bump a cop, mm-hmm. right, we go into jail for three lifetimes if we don't get killed on the spot. Right, because in this country, his life as an officer has some elevated value, right? So he's got elevated responsibilities, got elevated power, Mm -hmm. elevated allowances and all that. When he uses his elevated power to fuck over somebody, to violate somebody, why isn't his punishment elevated? Like, so so if, if, if we respect you so much, because my parents always told me, to those who much is given, much is expected. You know, you the oldest, so we gonna expect more of you. If you, you know what I'm saying, when you fuck up, you setting a bad example for your little brother. So you understand it, right? So so if, if so we in society hold these members of law enforcement to be so, you know, so valuable, so important, their lives is, you know, is so priceless, that's fine. We're gonna give them the elevated respect. But when they do shit in that elevated capacity, using the service weapon that we pay for with our tax dollars, to violate somebody, I I just think that it should be a no-brainer that their punishment should start at a certain heightened level. And it's like we don't even have the conversation. We got all of these different ways to absolve them of their responsibility and wrongdoing. And it's like we don't have that mechanism for no other population on earth. And that is that's that's bullshit. So they get to just take lives with no consequence and you know. I mean, if this is if this is the country where justice is supposed to matter, if you take someone in my family's life inappropriately, you know, like you know, not self defense, you did some shit that was just wrong, we should we should have the access to 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 draw our justice, which might end up costing you your life. That that is what America has presented itself to be. When you do a crime, you pay for it. When these people do crimes and they elevate a capacity, they just get to slide off because they got a blue shirt in the back. So, yeah. I understand. I mean, I understand and a few things. So, if you look at it in the context of what the police were built to do originally. Oh, I'm clear about the slave patrol. And I get what it. they are supposed to do now you design a structure and you put systems and laws and things like that in place to protect people from doing what the fuck you're asking them to do, right? So one, who, generally speaking, 
are policemen. White men. All right. So <laughs> going Shit. about their day catching niggas. That's what they do. Is But you don't want them to suffer no consequences for accidentally killing a nigga. They don't. No, that, I mean, nobody, I mean, that's, they don't even think about us. Like, that's, the rules are never written for that. And then that that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's where the discussion That lies. protect and serve foolish ass. It, it protect man, and serve who? Man, that's spray paint. Protect and serve who? Oh, no, they protect white, and serve. White them. life and property. Yeah. Yeah, so white life and property. If you look at, that's why, okay, that's what we're asking them to do. Then you do things like say, okay, if you're in... Be of acting in your official capacity, you can't be sued personally. But Dave, so that's one. Dave, hold on. Dave, if Let a lady call and say a white man broke into my house, and the police pull up on the scene and see a black man taking his trash out, and they fuck over this dude and say I don't know who I'm looking for, and it leads to something happening to this dude, like I'm sorry, bro, like. I, look, the back, the blue people bleed the badge, all that other bullshit. I'm cool with it. But look, you can't make my mind understand how it's on tape. The dispatcher is telling the two people in the car, you're looking for a white male. They pull up on the scene and hack the black man up taking this trash out. Like, come on, bro. Like, and you want me to in you you want you want me to, to sit and, you know, be calm and keep composure and think that you just oh it's just an error. It's just an error. I'm like, come on, bro. You're right in that respect. So you say the standard to hold this person accountable is not what a reasonable person in that situation would do. It's to say what what a police officer do in that situation. So they do get that different standard, and you're very much so right as part of that. They didn't increase the consequences for falling below that standard. They decreased I'm it. Sure you because, again, who you really trying to protect in this situation? And then it's like, oh, well, if you got rid of that, we couldn't find policemen. Oh, if everybody had to have a college degree, which has shown that, okay, it don't matter where you went or whatever, but if you have a college degree, you're much more likely to demonstrate not racist shit as a policeman. Oh, we wouldn't get nobody to sign up to be police. Well, I don't want them signing up anyway. And maybe I do need to start recruiting. From some college campuses, some HBCU, that some is other. all fine and dandy. But you don't have to have a degree of fucking GD or no ba- basic understanding to understand. You you just told this black man to give you his license. He reached to give you his license. You kill him. Fine. That's that's how y'all handle situation. Black man reach for license. You kill him. White man has gun, points gun at you. He walks away. Ha. Like you, you, you can't tell me that that is. Oh shit! I didn't know. Like you can't tell me that is. Oh, you know, I was in a split second of the, you know, the, the heat of the moment. Hey, that make a split second decision, man. You full of shit, man. So how you fix it though? Like, what's the solution? The solution is, unfortunately, somebody is going to have to lose their uniform life. The the same law that would put me under the jail, and, and I want to be clear, I'm not advocating for no vigilante justice. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the same system of laws and statutes and ordinances that would put my ass under the jail four times for bumping that cop should be the same system that makes sure that this cop's life is going to have to be put, he's going to have to get up on the crucifix so all the rest of the cops can know, look, you, you can end up next. So the, and if you have the opportunity to think about it, maybe you shouldn't pull your gun instead of saying, that was my taser, I'm, I'm, a, I'm my gun, my t-. like, come on. Like, you, you, and then, then, like, let's talk about the case in Monroe. Like, they, the state police lied to this brother's family, bro. So, they intentionally lied to this brother's family to say the man crashed into a tree. 
the man that got shot and the man that got beat up, the man that got dr drug across the ground face first while he was hog tied by his hands and his feet. So you're going to tell me you was protecting the servant? Like that, that you, you, you cannot justify that kind of shit. And to live in a country where that, that is okay, like society, we'll, we'll find a way to turn the eye to that. But that 14 or 15 year old young brother out there who's smoking weed, like his life got to be over? Like, come on, bro. How you fix it, though? So I just I, he 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 got to pay the price, bro. Like some somebody had. What, what is the reason for penalty? What is the reason for penalty? What is that? What is the so what is it's, so the it's, DA, it's deterrence? It's deterrence. So the DA got to decide to charge that person with murder. Absolutely, and they got to be convicted. Absolutely, no, they they don't have to be convicted. They have to be they 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 have to pay the penalty for it because. Convicted conviction, and then you know I want to apply for. I mean, I want to uh, 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 submit for a retrial well, and first, you know, all first that. Degree no, no, murder, no, 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 no. First degree murder is a a high mountain to climb, and yeah, because you got Louisiana. the intent and all that other stuff. Yeah. You got to pr prove it's, it's a mostly second degree, but I mean, in Louisiana life is life. So, but see. I, I, so I, they go to they go to prison. But, I, I, but take, I, I come to, I come to this from the the people and family centric perspective. And although my, my uncle was you know was a police officer, I, I you know I understand that I I come to this from the people and for the family that has lost someone because Officer X Y Z was feeling a little feisty that day. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I, you can't tell me that Officer XYZ's family being able to see him in jail for the rest of his life, that don't provide no justice to this family that got a missing seat at Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, birthday, and all that other stuff. So I'm saying, like, if we are really a country that is concerned about doing equal justice, and if penalty really has the objective of providing a deterrent towards behavior, then there has to be an elevated penalty, because why? Society gives you this elevated status as an officer. You on a pedestal. If a man, if a man clips you, bro, you could say assaulting the officer and you could fuck this person's life up just because you felt like oh they bumped me. So if you if you step outside of the 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 the, the, the I don't know the status that we give you socially, we agree to give them that power. If they use that to violate somebody, bro, like you you gotta pay an elevated price in the public square. You, I don't care if they tar and quarter them in a, at noon, like they they have to pay some ele, ele and I'm talking egregiously elevated price because if 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 people started getting their driving hands cut off for running red lights, how many people you think would be running red lights? Nobody, because everybody won't keep that hand. So if you want to stay an officer and allow to work your details and go get your free donuts and all that other stuff, guess what you better do? When you stop Greg and Dave, you better treat them like they're human. Because if you get out of pocket and one of them lose their arm or their leg or you tell Greg, reach for his license and you shoot him in his arm, guess what? Guess what the law going to allow? The law is going to allow Greg's family to use your service pistol and knock your arm off too. Okay. Right? So that, that, that is justice. And I, I bet you we wouldn't have these problems no more. And that line of reason is also, I guess, part of the the free them all or uh, defund the police. How do you feel about those terms then? So 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 I I, I think the defund the police thing is a very specific conversation. Because to me, defund the police is defunding the militarization of police. So if you go in to stand in the net charter school, mm. you don't need a uh, AR-15. Yeah. Like, like you don't need that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah. so if you're going to, you know, what I'm saying, I understand we got the crime, you know, the, the violence we got in New Orleans. But if you go into a community to stop a little community beef, you know, a lady calls and say my son, you know, is having a lamental crisis, bro. You don't need to roll up with the SWAT team. Like, man, come on, bro. You don't you need all that. It should only be like one, two, five. That's what I'm saying. So, Baby, so yeah. So, so, so. You don't for, need a Bradley fighting vehicle. Ex, yeah, you don't need like two or yeah. three tanks in the 2021. Like you that, that. that for me is what defund the police is. It doesn't yeah. mean we have no police at all. That's not, that's not what I. I'll take it a step further. So I, I think, and this is what, so I think all this come down to no elected official won't pull the whole card 
of any police department. I play on call. Um, I guess that's why I don't have elected office, but um, I play a whole card because I wouldn't cut the budget. I would direct that the budget be spent in different ways. Like we are, we are not spending money on militarization Absolutely. anymore. We are going to fund people, officers, to go to social work school. Y'all can go get graduate degrees in social work. You keep your same rank. Mm -hmm. You will not be in the street with a pistol. You not on the pistol team no more. Right. That's not your job. <laughs> right. If you really about protecting and serving, we will pay for you to go get uh, some other degree in like community outreach, uh, yeah. park management, so yeah. you can run a Nord program. Uh, human philosophy, All so you understand that. people. Shit. All of that. We can go back to true community policing. We're not gonna hire nobody different. We want you all right. to opt into these fields. But you gotta know these people in this community because you gotta want to be part of the community. Part of the community. You can come from right. outside. A lot of people move from here and yeah. whatever. You gotta be want to be part of this community. Right. This community. Right. You gotta see yourself as an asset yeah, to the community. Yeah. Not some not TV just, uh, shit. Yeah. 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 Whether it be cops, law and order, or some you know gentrifying vision or whatever you thought it was about to be. Right. This neighborhood. Right. You gotta be want to want to be part of these communities, right? And yeah, I wouldn't cut the budget at all. No, I don't. I don't think. But let's the fund. Should, people, they still gotta work. They still gotta do their job. Let's fund people at Nord. Let's fund more social workers. You know, let's fund case workers for you know homeless, transient support. All of these things yeah. that we asking the police to do already. Right. Right. But we, and, and if. And if the answer from them come back, we can't find enough people that don't want to shoot motherfuckers. That's a different conversation. Then you show your true colors. Yeah, it's a different conversation. Then you showing your true colors. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a lot of the motivation for a lot of motherfuckers who end up in law enforcement. Now, y'all got to go. But look, if 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 it how long does it take you to become a baller? Like Few years. Few, uh, yeah, you're right. Few years, right? How long does it take you to become a police officer? Six, you know, seven months. Counting in weeks, huh? Six, six, seven months, right? So why does it take you longer to learn how to line somebody up than it does to learn how to feel your taser versus your gun? Again. Like I don't understand. I cut hair and Drew Hall. I understand. Yeah, I know how long it took me to become to do. halfway proficient with the straight aid. All right. The straight edge was not easy to learn, all right? I'm, I'm clear about that. But I'm pretty sure that the service Glock might be a little bit more difficult to master than a straight edge razor, right? So why is it that, we're, and you're going to send them out into what could be very tense situations where they have to interface with people who are emotional, who got, you know, all kinds of motivations, all kind of things driving them, all kind of stresses going on, and they got to be able to maintain their composure with that quick in and out training? Like, if we can fund that type of training for those who really want to be, get behind the badge. Right. But we we not paying for is AKs. You know, what was it? It was, um... That is crazy. What was something? Something was about to go down. Something, it was like a month ago, I want to say. And Oh, the verdict in uh, George, George Floyd, Floyd trial, trial. Right. right? And, you know, New Orleans, even, you know, with the summer and all of that, we had the, yeah, the like, protests and all riding, that. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't loose. Except when they got on the bridge, and I told them, I'm like, y'all can take y'all ass up on that bridge if y'all want. <laughs> you ain't gonna like you the not about to get to no Jefferson Parish. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all now. I'm not going. I, <laughs> I'm pump into it. White people don't want you over there. So, nigga, I had to go look. I had to go look. Because I'm like, you know, you would go up on the bridge and you come down to LGS. Yeah. So, JPK stop you. Are you dumb, man? <laughs> nigga, you look at the parish map. That shit, it go like a lit, like. I say a strip, no, a, <laughs> a little strip. triangle, <laughs> a strip, a little bitty triangle on the new bridge, cause you know 
<laughs> when we were growing up, it was just the one, right? right. The main span yeah. that's going yeah. West Bank. To, West Bank. to yeah. the West Bank. Yeah. To the West Bank. So on the new and the new one. Coming back. He did a cut a little daddy. So they could pull people over. You think Harry Lee was by, taking it? You dumb. Behind a toll bridge, yeah. <laughs> you think, no, it's on the top of the bridge. It's on the top of the bridge. Because he oh, didn't own the toll. The toll was the state. Oh. Harry Lee son. wasn't taking it, son. You think they was building that bridge and Harry Lee can't slam somebody on it. You out your mind. He <laughs> Just so it catch every lane, son. I That's had to go see. Crazy. I did I, this was after that. I'm like, yeah, them them uh like y'all ain't about to get hit go cross no river. Hey, y'all is, y'all's dead. And sure enough, damn. Here they come. Cry. They <laughs> told y'all. The two guys and all that. I told y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Hell me, y'all. I, they, y'all ain't have to wait for them to say that. I told y'all don't go up there. Foreseeable risk hey, and manageable risk. It is what it is. It is what it is. Hey. It is what it is. But yeah, oh anyway, so the, the verdict is coming out and they in City Park, um, where the the horse stable is, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, they went on I'm thinking they gathered up. I see it because I, I drive, you know, through City Park on uh, on Harrison. So I'm coming up Harrison and I just see all of the police cruisers. You know, they don't have the, the cruising where they got the big, with that Tahoe Suburban. Yeah, the big thing. daddy. So it's like 50 of them out there. I'm like, what the hell? And back, you know, in previous days, I mean, I was wet or something. Yeah, I was like, turn all the way around. <laughs> I can't even, I can't take it. Riding dirty. Like, I can't take it. I can't go all the way around. <laughs> Goddamn, it's six tenants. Oh, right, yeah. Fuck this bitch and walk. It's over. It's over. Yeah, but anytime so fitting together, so somebody gets slammed. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. So somebody gets slammed. I'm thinking, oh, this they responds to George Floyd. You know, they getting ready. I'm like, one, this the end of yeah, yeah, we're about to we about yeah, to tell Yeah. Yeah. We ain't got shit. So to I'm tell thinking first. they on the horse. About to do they they formation, right? I think them niggas out there on horses you know. They got the all black jump out boys, huh? J- jump out. Uh, He's the, the stormtrooper, yeah! They got the helmets, the shield, the full Play body. I'm like, Play. Play. Why, why? We, why, you ever, why we got that? But they blade like, I could, you couldn't duck off in, the, in me shoot and why, do this why somewhere? We, why, we, why we have that? Oh, but why are they practicing right there? That's my thing. This the whole softball field. They got to be five minutes from anywhere, dude. But you know where they at, though. Where they showing that force at. On the corner of Harrison and Wisner. That's where they showing the force well, at. Well, that's that, that population. So yeah. Once again. What Y'all they, safe. What, what are they here to protect? Y'all earth? safe. White life and property. If it go down tonight with the George Floyd. It won't come by y'all. Right? We're, so, we're, we'll be okay. Protect the white life and property. And then the police chief, he put out the little press release, you know. It's New Orleans, you know, we don't need to cut up and all that stuff. Like, No, they out there in full force, though. Broad daylight. Mm-hmm. So. Like, one of the one of the white dudes who in the association, like, he asked, he's like, I don't understand why you black guys even care about something that happened to another guy in another state. And I'm like, but see, like, the fact that you could even fix your lips to say that kind of shit. <clears throat> Right, like that, that, that speaks to lightness. Well, it just speaks to, and and that's the, the fucking disease, right the there. The caucasity. That's the fucking disease. No. All right, the fucking Bigsbyisms. <laughs> Shit. Trade <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Bigsbyism. Oh man, so uh, yeah. All right, so we related got to the policing, dog. Um. They, I mean, killing, but most of it, those encounters just turned into plain old slam city. Yeah. And but the 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 probability at which we get slammed exactly. is elevated. So you know what I mean, so just for the rundown, just for the rundown. Please, I don't even say please. Just acknowledge this shit. Yeah. So it start with reason two through twenty nine slavery. 
then we talked about the Thirteenth Amendment, which freed us, right, and ended slavery, except if you get slammed, right, certain conditions. No, except if in, you get slammed in, in repayment yeah. for commission of a crime. <clears throat> yeah, a certain condition. Right so now. then we get all these crimes, reckless eyeballing. Mm-hmm. I, 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 out after curfew, meandering, meandering. The fuck is meandering? Right. Basically, being black. Yeah, that's what it sounds. And like. get the police to enforce these. So the slave patrol. It's basically just carry over. Yeah, these prisons. All of a sudden, the prison in the building, the prison of damn, the same plantation. Same. Speaking of, just just on a side note, I went work the semi pro game, literally across the fucking interstate from Saint Gabriel, right? The women's prison, mm-hmm. and like I just I just had to stop, like on timeout and just look at that shit. Like man, look at the size of all of that shit, and we using it to just lock motherfuckers away. Like this is, this is some abhorrent shit. Like this is the but but and and, and I could I could only imagine. <clears throat> That if you had to do a demographic of the the inmates in that motherfucker, 75, 80% and up gonna look just like us, right? So that's somebody's mama, somebody's auntie, somebody's sister, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who's supposed to pass down oral traditions in a community. So like that that's the kind of shit that the insidiousness of this country intentionally to fuck over our people. Mm-hmm to steal everything that we could claim for ourselves to take from us and force us to be reliant on this bullshit that's called America, man. That's like, I mean, the, the, that's that's why they felt like they needed to, you know, inscribe slavery into law. You know, oh, that yeah. Way, yeah, to make make that way you can't you can't yeah. you can't abolish it, you can't you repeal can't, it. Yeah. None of the other dumb shit y'all gonna try to do. No. Well, it's America, so that, bro. That one of the segments I wanna do with the show is how I hate this and you know again fucking white man want to have this fake uh, debate uh, uh, this f- this false comparison uh, 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 capitalism and socialism mm-hmm. and Everything they want people to believe about capitalism is really free enterprise. And has nothing to do with whether we live in a capitalist or socialist regime. And I also want to mention, by the way, to stupid motherfuckers out there, I'm not talking about communism. I'm not talking about the state owning means of production. That's not what I'm talking about. That's stupid. I don't subscribe to it. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> so just so I mean, whatever yeah, kind, I'm, gonna, that, I'm gonna pause periodically to call to call out stupid motherfuckers. You give say, credit for being oh, stupid. You right? talking so communism? No, stupid. I'm not talking about communism. I'm talking about comparing capitalism and socialism, and how free enterprise operates in both forms of government. Right. So let's get free enterprise out, out the, the way. Out the yeah. way. Yeah. People make shit, people buy shit. Right. If I make the best shit based on what people want, I make buku money. Yeah. So I don't begrudge <coughs> Jeff Bezos for making buku money. You saw a chance, you gotta I, take yeah. it. Yeah, see a chance, you gotta take it. Yeah. All right? I don't really begrudge the Waltons for making cheese, right? Walmart the shit. Nobody else is doing the story. Everybody like yeah. All right. Well, Swagman. Son. But Swagman, he, yeah, that's right, me. We had to pause right yeah. there for Swagman. Swagman, right? yeah. <laughs> Swagman people <laughs> fucking had to pause for Swagman, Swagman right there. Swagman was a dog. I, he was out here before. I don't, I don't know if they came up at the same time. Right, quick. It would have been him going back and forth with Walton had he, you know. <laughs> I think it was like a family issue after he passed or something. Um, but Swag was, was out here. You had to bring Swag into the game. But yeah, so Swag, Walmart. If you go to the you go to the barber you won't go to, because that's free enterprise. Right. 
He charged the fucking You charge. go who you want. He charged what he charged. Oh, it's on him to set a price. It's on you to pay it. Is it? That's it. You know? That's free to price. Okay. So let's... Capitalism and so Capitalism allows for Jeff Bezos to make $16 million in a day when they got just hungry people generally in the country. Period, yeah. One. Yeah. But, like, no health care. Right. Right? Why is that a thing? Why is health insurance a thing? Right. Right? That's capitalism. Right. Health care, universal, Medicaid, that's socialism. It doesn't matter if you get sick because we have enough money as a country. Take care. If you're a child or you old. So take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. I believe, and most people believe, that the country has enough money to just knock it out for everybody. Um, but insurance companies exist to take a profit. What value are they adding to the system? Yeah, None. Yeah. No value. But it's required. It's required. You can't do shit without it. So. You got to work to be tied to insurance. They used to be able to kick you off if you got sick. How you have insurance and get penalized for, for some shit. shit that's that you supposed to use. That's not in case shit. You're penalized, for, you're penalized for using it. But it's not a, in, healthcare is not an in case shit. Shit, thing. It's like a cell phone. It's coming. You're going to need it. You're not paying for the phone in case you might need it. You're paying for a service. You, you, you use it all the time. You're supposed to use healthcare all the time. Right. It's supposed to be there. Right. And I. But that is also a level of power. But, but that, they want to make you believe that making Jeff Bezos <clears throat> pay. Eight million dollars of that in taxes is is wrong. One, like they just make that a bad thing. Just off top, uh, government taking my money. I pay taxes because Fuck him. <laughs> they allow people to rate the game with the government money. So. Farm industry, for instance, we subsidize the farm industry. Certain people in this in the farm. Yeah. Industry. Yeah. So because the black farmers. That's like, not free enterprise. They get the dick in the butt. That's not free enterprise. That seemed pretty fucked up to me. Man, white farmers get subsidized. That's capitalism. I mean, I it just. Yeah. So I just want I I'm always gonna pause to highlight these differences between. Hey. Capitalism and socialism. We can't assume that all of our listeners understand. In so, the context yeah. of prisons, some things I just feel like, again, capitalism versus socialism, some things should not be a for profit endeavor. Like prisons? Schools, prisons, but the military, mm. the highway, not even really. I mean, schools are more local, but. You know, people can choose to go to, to but, private but schools, once, right? But once prisons got shifted to the the penal yeah. philosophy as opposed to the penitent philosophy, then, you know, the length of stays began yeah. to expand. So the ability to, like, wait a minute. So if this motherfucker going to be here all day, every day for the next 20 years, how much can I get a day for having his ass in a bed? But how you even sign a contract where you as the state guarantee a certain number is going to be in jail. I mean, how is that even a legal contract? Motherfuckers was mad because they couldn't make the jail bigger here. How is that even a legal contract, though? You just going to guarantee we going to pay y'all that 100 nigga every night. So if you slammed, what did the 13th Amendment say? What, is hap what happens to you if you slam? So that $100 a day for, you know, what, cons what is basically an able-bodied motherfucker who's going to do what I tell him to do, when I tell him to do it, if I tell him to do it, when I tell him eat, sleep, shit, what he going to do? Eat, sleep, and shit, right? That hundred dollars a day ain't nothing. You know how much, you know how, so when I was working as, at, 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 in, in the mayor's office, right, some of the brothers who had been in the, in the system, one of the brothers used to always talk about his cut. 
right? Mm -hmm. So he was at Angola. He was saying, like, he's like, Greg, you can't really understand how far a cut is and how wide a motherfucking cut. Like, the amount of grass or crops or what that you're responsible for cutting and picking, he was like, one man got a cut that's long as your fucking eye can see. And they got, like, 20, 30 motherfuckers lined up across from each other. Everybody got a cut. So if you spend $100 a day, uh, so the payment is $100, and please don't think that that brother is going to oh, see. No. Please don't think that brother going to see anything more than two, three cents, right, out there $100. Like, come on, man. That's, that's how this shit, the prison industrial complex mm -hmm. and the for-profit industry of prisons, man, psh, when you told me about the Angola shit, yeah, man. I was like, hey, baby. You just, you just you just lined it up right there, man. Like the whole bloodline, who still gets to profit off all of the, the industry that comes out of the prison the slash slant plantation, you know? The fucking beeline. You get a whole a whole deputy assigned, no, a whole trustee assigned to you because you want because yeah. you on a beeline. The beeline. For those of y'all who don't know the beeline. So Angola, everybody, everybody know Angola. The farm. Yeah. So Angola is a is a plantation, and it's the state penitentiary, in Louisiana. At Angola Plantation. Um, it's still a working plantation. Plantation, and not all of the prison guards, but I guess you would call them like the senior prison the officials. E the e board, the executive, the board, executive committee, you know, senior leadership team or whatever, they the live executive on committee. what's known as the B line. Is it the row housing? I mean, Angola is huge, right? It's almost a city, massive. And they have a nice little, look like a nice little suburban street, little boxes, look like you know, put a train park or old Lakeview or something. The B line, right? And they live in these houses. And the people that live on the B line are descendants of the original overseers who were at the plantation when it became the prison farm. Otherwise known as the free man. That shit blew me away. And but wait, but they not, get, a, not the they only get a, thing that they blew get me a away. trustee. They get a whole person yeah. assigned to their yeah, house. They, yeah, they get a boy. Yeah. They get a boy, basically. So one of the prison trustees cut the grass, give them haircuts, wash the dishes. So you cook, think I'm, I'm sure. about to stop letting niggas get slammed for weed and stop my 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 boys coming? That what you think the I'm about to do? Bee line. That shit blew my mind. The bee line. So and the wolf dogs. These niggas breed wolf dogs. On top of because ain't no fence. Yeah, it's just. Ain't you, ain't no going, you ain't going nowhere. If they realize like you're yeah. not where you're supposed to be, they just let the wolf dogs. Yeah, mm. you ain't going and nowhere. The, and the prisoners breed the wolf dogs. Yep, on top of the, Some of the on top of the rodeo, yeah. on top of the, yeah. you know, all of the plants and the mattresses and the license true, plates bro. and everything else that they make up there. And these brothers make about what two cent, two yeah, three cents. They got something for you to do. After you've been there for a while, you get up to about a quarter, something like that, right? But this this is wh where does the rest of that one hundred dollars a day go if you made if you gave this brother a quarter? Where's the rest of that hundred dollars a day go? Because you didn't spend a hundred dollars on housing him, especially if he's in what some Camp J or some shit. Some corporation bottom line. And again, what they want y'all to believe, and this is where again going back to just acknowledging the shit. They was like, okay. You know, stocks are doing where it goes to the corporate bottom line. You know, people invest capital in corporations to make money, capital gains, and different. That ain't your money. You not participating in that. None of that shit. You don't own no stock. It's going to hold the stock market doing good, the economy doing good. You broke. Oh, the 401k and all that. That shit ain't going nowhere. You ain't got none of that. That's aspirational. That's a dream. But it's a psycho. So, so once again, we go back to the fallacy that we talked about. Once the fallacy gets evaporated, all of the shit that we talking about, all of this shit collapses. Then you got fucking anarchy, right? 
And then motherfuckers popping out with the SWAT team shields and grenade launchers and, you know, pellets and all this other shit. I was telling you before the show, I got to dress like I'm It's go time. It's go time, right? (laughs) Waiting for the the warning. It's it's go time. Yeah. It's go time. Hey, man. You know, it's a... And and what I see in that, and I'm not going to say sympathetic. But you know, as as we move into this, you know, I gotta I gotta go off about the go vote. Um, I'm not gonna say I'm sympathetic. I'm empath. I understand. All right. Well, white man, you it, the, your time is is come. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just too much information out there. Other people's microphones are louder. Right. Um, certainly than they have been in the past. In some instances, and in a lot of instances, louder than yours. All right. Um, people don't put respect on your name no more. You ain't nobody, boss, Matt, none of that. Yeah. We don't care. Even really white women don't really care no more. They could do it themselves too. So, um, all, like you said, all of that, that fallacy, that mystery is coming down. It's just going away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it was at Charlottesville, you would not replace us. It's not necessarily a replace y'all. Just forget about y'all. It's, we don't, if you're not willing to join, like, people moving forward and, like, as the country actually is. But that's a, that's a perspective pe- speaking to power. Their perspective from power is you motherfuckers not about to replace us. We're going yeah, we gonna, we gonna to change the laws. And if that don't work, we're going to change the lines of the district. And if that don't work, we're going to send a candidate yeah. to to make sure your candidate don't lose, I mean, don't win votes. And if that don't work, we're going to do some other shit. Yeah. We'll think about that later, but we got a whole list of shit that we're going to throw at your ass up front. Yeah, I know. Oh, so make no mistake. I know they capable of burning that bitch to the ground. I let's, let's make no mistake about this. I... <laughs> I fully respect they crazy. All right? Yeah. I, they're, I, they're the original crazy. I res- yeah. yeah. Motherfuckers and, so that's a perfect transition. Smart. So why they not a white the, man? Broke it to the Capitol. Why not a white man? <laughs> they gonna bring it to the Capitol. That's <laughs> little shit. That's little shit for me. They think it's little shit for a different reason. They're like, oh, yeah. You know, we're going streaking. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> like, that's, that's why it's little for them. That's how they really think. That's how they really date. So. Yeah. So it's a little shit for me because I keep shit in perspective, right? So white men have killed more people on this continent. That's what they do, Dave. Than any other group of people. All the other peoples combined. Combined. Dave. All the other peoples combined. Right? But they want everybody believe they scared. They signatures, they like, their signature is mischief and bloodshed. It's shit. retarded. It's mischief and bloodshed. That's it's retarded. <laughs> it's retarded. So, like, people just don't believe that shit no more. And right. it's like, they can kick and scream all that they want. But, like, the time is coming. Like, they see more babies being born who, one, just don't identify, won't identify like that. You know, they see young people now just not subscribing and not having saying fuck it. The disposition is and it and it's it's just not the culture they grew up in. I was yeah. I was looking at um you know, tell you how crazy how wild this dream is. I was watching Golf Channel. All right. You know, the the PGA lot the PGA championships coming on. And I'm listening to all of these guys talk about how they idolize Tiger. All, all right. of these white boys talked about how they idolized yeah. Titan. He was really the first, right? You know, Jordan, you know, be like my... Like, no athlete, no white athlete was talking about that. Very right. few white boys was really talking about that group. They won't be... Like Jordan. They shit. won't be Stockton or uh, Bird right. or something. Right, definitely. Their parents wasn't having Kevin that. Oh, I'm going to be guy. like Mike. Yeah, you nigga, you, you be a ride this whiteness. Fuck around talking about Jordan. You better, better ride this whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't about to be no John. <laughs> shit. Oh, but now shit. you actually have, you know, black athletes. Like, it's not uncommon or even crazy for right. 
you know, oh, I want to be Steph Curry, you know, you know, Jewish kid at Newman. and uh, you know, I can be LeBron if you are a six six wing at some. But French just the psyche, like the psyche yeah. allows me to think that they did because I don't believe you could watch somebody like a Jack Johnson just knock a motherfucker out. Joe Lewis and, came and, to mind, and don't aspire. Yeah, like I don't, I don't give a fuck what you think. When he was Cassius, Muhammad used to pop that shit. All right, he yeah. used to talk, he used to talk some shit. Yeah. and you can't tell me. That in a society that was what it was at that time to have a black man who will stand up and talk his shit, and if you get in front of him, he will knock your ass out. Yeah, like you can't tell me that they didn't aspire to be that, but but whiteness would not allow them to admit to it. Yeah, I, I, I shit. That is exactly what I'm saying, and I'm saying like these kids today don't have, have that. that. Yeah. Oh, I'm white. I I I think they have it. It just doesn't go there. It doesn't. It yeah, don't go. It don't cover that. that. It don't but cover the that. people who did grow up, like the white boys who did grow up, like that, the motherfuckers that in the white, Senate. that veneer of whiteness, the motherfuckers in the Senate. Yeah, that's, but, and that's what I'm saying. We got to go vote, and just vote for not a white man. Right. Well, well, Dave, how's that? You know, you make it seem so simple. If you're telling me in any election, any election, and I'm gonna start bringing you know sample ballots and things like that mm -hmm. for my own. Elections, I vote in every election. People think I'm crazy. Everyone, mm -hmm. posters, got to everything. Every, everything, everything. I don't care. Right? There, in this time in America, has to be not a white man on the ballot. Right. In most races. Agreed. If you live in a place where there is not a not a white man on the ballot, one, reevaluate your life situation. Two. Run. Run. And get on the ballot. So there will be not a white person on the ballot. On the ballot, right. Well, okay, let's say they have several. If, like, assess your issues. What is the most important thing to you as a voter? It could be any issue. Right. It could even be, I don't think women should uh, make just as much as men. It could be no abortion ever. Right. It could be uh, niggas stay in jail till they turn 75 minimum sentence. I don't care what it is. I don't care about that. Whatever, about you, whatever your primary issue is, about your there shit is too. likely not a white man who agrees with you. Vote for that person. So you at least still core on your issues. Right. So it doesn't feel wrong. Right. You know, you're not betraying your, you know, small D Democratic values or, you know, giving away your small R Republican representation. Right. So that's kind of where it, that's where I'm starting. And I'm going to kind of formulate this and, and right. whatnot. But what will they say to that? We've given it a go with the overwhelming over-representative composition of our every form of government has been white men. Oh, white men. Okay. And we at where we at. Right. Good, bad, ugly. And however you want to call it. All right. I'm with you. For better, for worse. Right. Wherever the country it, it is, is what right it is. Now, it is what it is. It's going to fall apart if we don't have mostly white men doing these jobs. Who going to make that argument? I want somebody to get on TV or call me or whatever and make that argument. I want somebody to call and tell me. I, 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 I'm ready for it. I just, I don't think there is, at least I have not been exposed to, someone who's willing to take that divergent a trajectory in their thought. And right? the first person, inkling, who gave me an inkling publicly that they were really to, willing to go there, Mayor Lori Light, Lightfoot okay. in Chicago. She said, I'm only giving one-on-one -on -one interviews to not white people, period. For my last two years in office, my next two years, because you might run for re-election, I'm not sitting down, I'm not one-on-one -on -one talking to no white people no more. What they gonna say? But she's, she's representative of the, black, the community that she represents, a, right? a black woman 
does not but, but her, her sexuality. Her sexuality man, 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 I don't give a shit about that. I don't give a fuck she, about that. She claims it, but she's saying specifically, she's make she's not saying women. She's not saying period. LGBTQ. Period. She's saying not white. white period. So period. what I'm saying is, you could be whatever, as long as you ain't white. But but there, there is a different mindset when you reach elected office, mm-hmm. and you feel an obligation to advance the cause of the people who look like you, Mm -hmm. right? That's a different philosopher because we've had a whole lot of people who got in office and looked like us, and once they got in office, you know, even we might even have one who's in the office right now. Who that that, once we got into office, then well, you know, maybe I'm not as black as I thought I was, you know, or maybe maybe those those concerns aren't concerns that align with my ticket or my platform as a candidate, Mm -hmm. right? So to that. And I think that when we have not a white man, we need to be clear about, all right, motherfucker, oh. you, you, you not a white man standing here in front of me. But when you get your ass up on that stage at the Astor Crown Hotel <laughs> and you're talking about your platform, you better remember these same people who sat on, on these milk crates in the middle of the daytime, you know what I'm saying? They gave you their time and told you about what needs to be happening in their community. You brought Don't up, switch up, motherfucker. You brought up two very important issues. One is the crux of this whole thing is you got to vote. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You got to vote. Two is, well, Dave, what do we live in the district we live in for uh, the the congressional district? Let's right. just take that for instance, right. right? But for, and I give him respect, Joseph Gow, there's been... Not a white man. Well, I ain't gonna say but for Gal, but yeah. this been not a white, not a white man, man for a while. Right. Representing us. So a person who I, whose opinion, perspective I respect, says, you know, black cisgender men are the white men of <laughs> black people. Wait, say that again. <laughs> say that so again. black hetero men All right. are the white men of black people. So our opinion, they really try to hear what we talk about the boy either. So I will say this. Uh, Go with the black woman. That should be the default setting to me in most of the I mean, they're the strongest voting block anyway. So, I mean, let's be real about that. They're They're the most consistent, generally, the most reliable, the most reasonable people. Right. So, go with the black woman. I mean, they were everything. And if it's two black women, then, hey, you have two. Solid choices. Pick which one. Then it's about your policies and politics right. at that point. Who most aligns with your values at that point. But if we could all just start with not a white man and go from there. But then you also got your, you know, and unfortunately I heard a lot of this when I was in City Hall. You know, you have a lot of people who look like us who their their vision and their outlook on what needs to happen is not from the perspective of what's best for us. It's about what's best for us fitting into a system that has never really been a space for us to fit into. So, so why the fuck do you care about how we fit into a system when we've been getting our ass kicked by the same system? Like, I, what's the what's the magic? I don't understand. So that's... I have been registered independent in VA. <laughs> I didn't have a registered in the district, but I was independent in VA, and I'm no party here. Registered independent, no party. Um, I don't subscribe to a lot of the bullshit. One, you gotta vote. When people talk about the notion of the wasted vote and all of that, shit, I vote for Noonie Man every time he run. Hey. For Congress and for Mel. Why hey. not? Hey. Um, because I don't subscribe to a lot. I get serious when you know general election come around. Um, but nobody's gonna be perfect. Nobody's gonna perfectly align with your values. And I uh-huh. suspect if the composition of the room itself were different, some people who look like us and would purport to represent our interests would be held more accountable for dumb shit. Right. Um, and may not even, not, not that they would change, but we'll recognize that self-interest just isn't, you know, the, their self-interest isn't aligned with their that that old way, that old guard. Oh, okay. 
you know, we're moving in a new direction. I I truly believe as a country. And now, again, like you said, everything, they're going to fight tooth and nail. People, it's a survival instinct. Um, And again, I'm not, I'm trying to end white men. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. One, leave us the fuck alone. Just stop with the assholery, generally speaking. We're moving on. We're moving on. Yeah. I I I just <clears throat> I'm I'm one of those people that like, you know, I don't I'm not gonna say I hold grudges, but I hold grudges, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I think that a part of the moving on thing and a part of the, you know, like you say, leave us alone part is like when a dog shit in the house, you gotta rub his nose in it to make sure he don't shit in the house no more, right? Yeah. So so at some point, you know what I mean, like the leave us alone has to be, you know, like and I like Minister Farrakhan always says this so beautifully. He said, White people's greatest fear of black people coming to power is that we will do to them and their children mm-hmm. what their fathers have done to us, right? Mm-hmm. And I I sit kind of in the middle of that because I feel like we ain't gotta burn them, but like we gotta like hold a match real, 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 real close to them, so they, you know, so that they understand that th- this we, we are we are no longer the fe- the people who will have our backs bent so that you can't ride them. Mm-hmm. Like we're not here to fuck over you, but if you talk too loud, we will slap the piss out you. And like, and I think that there are, are far too far too few, especially black men in power, which is why a lot of black women women have to do it mm-hmm. now that enough black men who will stand up and be strong enough to be able to say that to a system that didn't want them to be in the office or the seat that they end up mm-hmm. in. And it's like they're all scared. Like, you know, me and, my, me and my dad, we always get into it about Barack. And, you know, and he always say, you know, well, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to understand that there were certain things he couldn't do. But then you have, you know, like Asian hate crime bills yeah. being, you know, executive orders being created. So then you say, well... If, if the executive order is a capacity that the presidency had, how come when this individual was in the mm-hmm. presidency, how come this was not something? So then you got to ask, well, you know, like who, who, who's going to be the one to stand up and not be Farrakhan in office, but God damn it, to be Farrakhan yeah. in office, though? Because, I mean, America is never going to see Far- Far- the minister will never be. Uh, uh, appropriate for anything, but that, but that, but that mindset of of doing everything in your power to make sure that the people who look like you have fortune, like every man who's been president in the history of this country, has done something to explicitly improve the fortunes of the people who look like him, except one. <laughs> There's only been one who hadn't, and I'm sure that people can, based off my my <laughs> rant, can probably guess who that one president is, right? And that's what I'm saying. You know, don't don't show up and you know you want to shoot basketball with the black brothers when you're running, but then when you become president and all you want to say is, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Mm. You know, well, what you gonna do? So th- that that is the fire that all of these not a white man candidates, male female, have to be held to because if you're gonna represent the interests of low people who probably not seen on a totem pole, you gotta have something to hold them accountable to it. And I just don't think that those mechanisms exist because one, we don't have the people who have the, the spirit like that for the people. And if they do, they've been to prison, so they, you know, they damage goods, so they, you know, you know. I'm saying, let's see. I'm saying, let's see. From the assessor to the sheriff to the DA to the city council, to the school board, I'm going to get some T-shirts made. The sheriff got mad at me because I didn't think the jail needed to be that big when, like, I I taught music at Paul Lawrence Dunbar Elementary, and the book that they gave me to teach my kids music started on page 27. <laughs> that, when you open the fucking cover, the first number at the bottom <laughs> of the page was 27. What the fuck? Where's the... This book belongs to. Where's that? 
Where the fuck was that page? So you mean to tell me you you really think I'm supposed to just sit back and be cool with you trying to lock up more brothers when you can't even give me a book to teach these kids some fucking music in a city that music is what yeah. what we do? You know what I'm saying? So like that that kind of shit is alignment with what's good for the people as opposed to what's good for your political career. Because I don't I really could give a fuck about anybody's political, political career. Experience, yeah. yeah, I could give a fuck about any of that. But supposed that, to be temporary anyway. Exactly. And if you responded to people, but again Who are the people that you responded to? Is supposed to be voters. Let's go see. So it's the chicken or the egg thing. But I'm firmly on the side of Go vote. I've been to my precinct. I normally, you know, one of the first ones there. But I went late one election a few years ago. I might have went about 20 or 30 minutes before the polls closed. I was the 31st person to vote. To vote. 30 minutes before the polls. 31st. All right. So I'm, I'm at, let's vote. I'm saying... This is who we should vote for. Right. And even one term. But Dave, you a learned man. Okay. I mean, I'm 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 a fairly learned man myself, right? So you you have the wherewithal to access information that's not readily presented to you, mm-hmm. right? To make sure that you inform so that when you go into the booth, you know what you're voting for and why you're voting for whatever you're voting for, right? For, for the average citizen, that's not any part of where they're thinking, right? Mm. But their vote is just as important yes. as yours or mine, I right? I agree. So at that, point, at that point, I think it is incumbent upon not a white man to make himself, and I, and I, I, I want to be careful, I'm not, I want to like, like belittle himself, but he has to bring himself to where those people are, right? And that means that your suit, with a shirt and tie, yeah, man, might not that ain't that's that, that's not about to happen. That's that's <clears> not <throat> that's not gonna get it done today, yeah. right? So 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 who is the, you know the the not a white man who is going to be willing to say, I'm I'm of the people and I'm willing to rise to the point where I'm representative of the people, so that those who may not be able to understand all of the fancy jogging and legalese of of ballot initiatives, I can make this shit look. So what he's saying is. You know, you're gonna pay extra on your homestead exemption or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. so who who's gonna do that? Thinking about being a servant to the people as opposed to thinking about himself as a politician. I'm a politician. That that is the the the, <coughs> the the give and take that I feel like enough people have to reason with and don't. I think you're going much deeper than what I'm trying to accomplish. All I'm right. talking about in every single election. Politics aside. Not a white man. White women, Asian women. But that's not going to be sufficient for everybody, in, Dave. In the election. I and, get it's, it. and it's not primarily for us. What you're talking about is the standard <clears throat> that we should hold our elected officials to in our community. And generally that people should in whatever community that they live in, their elected officials should represent them. Right. I'm saying, yes, I agree. What I'm also saying is there's at least one person on every ballot that's not a white man vote for that person. Mm. Let's let's start there. And and, and again, I, we're not talking about the second congressional district of Louisiana. We're talking about any any election. We're talking about the Dog first one, the first I get it. congressional district. I get it. Steve Scalise district. Anybody but him and people who look like him. Period. Yeah. Anybody. So, but that would require there to be one, one woman who everybody one who everybody votes for because everybody because because you can't have more than one because then they 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 split votes and then then they get to they, the runoff. They went by they get to the runoff. All right. It's got to be everybody. It's got to be everybody. Hey, I'm with the less seat. It's got to be everybody. And, so so how do you, way, man, how I don't do you, know but way. Dave, so you still gotta, gotta get be you still else. gotta get this this like random, you know, community member who look, man, I ain't with all that shit, man. And I'm they already work. running. No, oh, you're they, talking about to get them the vote. Yeah, so how do you get them oh, to gotta understand? Get you that, you that, got an old fashioned. So that, that's yeah. that's why I'm saying. I'm like, not saying it's gonna be easy, it's still a campaign. 
but, you still got a campaign for but, So, so Miss Mary don't give a shit about whether Greg and Dave think not a white man is the candidate. Well, Miss Mary want to hear not a white man come sit in her fucking living room or on a porch with her and drink some lemonade or something and explain to her why the white man is not the answer and not a white man is.